Falco would give you a I'll give you the word. Falco! Are we on? Oh yeah, I can hear me. Hey, hey, good, e good evening, everyone. Uh, just to give you an update, I was watching the report right before I came to church, and they said there's half as many people are recovering as are dying, which is a good report. We hope right. that you are uh, enjoying these Wednesday night Bible studies, and you're taking time at home to read and to study on your own. Father, we just give you thanks and praise for you, for the, your. Uh, peace and for your uh, blood that's covering us. We pray that the word tonight would be a really another great word from Pastor. We pray you'll bless him and fill him fresh and anew tonight in Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right. Well, here we are again. Week three or four. I'm forgetting now, but um, God is good. Just just want to uh, remind you about Sunday. We're going to be live streaming again, and I hope that you were with us this past Sunday for Resurrection Sunday. Uh, got a lot of comments, a lot of positive things. So hey, if you haven't if you haven't checked it out yet, if you haven't if you've missed if you haven't had a chance to listen to Sunday service, listen to it. Hopefully, it will be a blessing to you. And and also too, we just want to uh, just thank our church family, our church body, uh, just <clears throat> faithfully uh, giving during this time, their tithes and their offerings, and so we're just, we're just grateful, so I just wanted just to kind of express that to you and let you know, hey, we appreciate it, and so, and if you need something, if you need prayer, uh, you know, please uh, don't hesitate to call us, let us know so that we can be praying for you, someone will be, uh, someone myself, or someone will call, will get back to you, so hey, if you need something like that, let us know, keep the body in prayer, keep the church in prayer, uh, you know, this is a difficult time for for many, uh, you know, we have uh, people in, uh, um, in the nursing home, and, and, you know, we can't go visit them, your know, family who can't see them in person, so yeah, it's just really a, a tough time. So, you know, please keep those that are, you know, that that um, that need prayer in that way. And and certainly there are those in our church family that are sick right now that are going through different things. So, hey, you know, this is a time that we can be seeking God. We're doing church different, but hey, we're still church, right? And so anyway, we're going to uh, pick up in our study. We're studying. Uh, the Sermon of the Mount. So, hey, if you got your Bible, uh, turn there to uh, to Matthew chapter six. And like I said, we're studying the Sermon of the Mount, which is recorded in Matthew chapter five, six, and seven. Uh, some have labeled this sermon, or have actually titled this sermon as the Kingdom Handbook. The Kingdom Handbook, and I think that's really pretty cool. It's really appropriate because Jesus is telling us, his followers about his kingdom, the kingdom that he is bringing, okay, the kingdom of God. And so last week we uh, we uh, centered our study on this verse, and so if you got your Bible there in, in Matthew chapter 5, uh, verse, uh, verse uh, <laughs> I don't have it turned there myself, I don't know what verse it is, Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 or 17. Oh, no, no, that's not the one. It's the one right after that, okay? Ah, sorry about that. There you go. No, that's the one after that, okay? No, actually, it's verse 20. Okay, I got it now. Uh, we centered our study upon verse 20, so hey, you know, apologize for that. But let's read it in, in chapter 5, verse 20. It says, For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. So not only will you perhaps even you know, get saved, but you won't really know what life is about here on this earth. So Jesus goes on in verses 21 through 48, and I asked you or challenged you last week that if you would read those, there are six examples of how the righteousness of grace through Jesus exceeds or goes over and above the righteousness of, of the law. And so basically what Jesus is saying in these, in these six, six, in these six uh, um, examples is that he is saying that it isn't enough just to conform to God's rules in our external behavior. He also wants us 
to be changed on the inside. He wants us to resolve our anger. He wants us to refrain from sexual desires that are out of the bonds of marriage, to refuse to divorce just because, well, we're tired of being married, okay? To be truthful inside and out, to forgive those who have wronged us, and finally, to love even those who are not on our side, okay? And so that's kind of what chapter 5, how he talks about that. So we're going to go to chapter 6. Jesus continues the, this theme about living uh, by his kingdom handbook. You know, men and women who had lives who've been radically changed through the grace of God. And so our next section is going to be Matthew 6, verses 1 through 18. And here Jesus talks about motives of worship. And particularly three, which we're going to, to discuss, one tonight. You know, pe people perform acts of worship for many reasons. But those who belong to the kingdom need to watch what our motives are, okay? It is not just an issue of what to do, but it's why we do things or how we worship, you know? And, and so this is really what Jesus talks about. So we're going to, go on to, to begin tonight by laying down a general principle which really covers these, these, uh, these 18 verses that Jesus talks about. It, it's, it's found in Matthew 6, verse 1. And so let's read it together. He says, Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men, to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So Jesus begins by laying out this general principle, and then he follows with three examples, okay, in which we'll talk about those three, okay? So to paraphrase, if you would, what Jesus is saying. He says that your righteousness, our righteousness as Christians, needs to be better than the performance of those who do the right thing on the outside, but don't do the right thing from the inside, okay? In other words, you know, we can, you know, we can do the right thing and it looks right, you know, when you look at people, oh, it looks like they're doing the right thing, but it's not right from the inside, okay? And this is what Jesus is talking about. So I want to share with you just a few thoughts. So if you're taking notes, just write down these, these few things. That God wants you to follow him, not only with your behavior, but with your heart, okay? And so when we're talking about worship, and Jesus goes on and he talks about three expressions of worship. Worship is more than just singing uh, singing praise songs, singing worship songs. You know, worship speaks about our life. So God wants you to follow him, not only with your behavior, not just from the outside, but God, what he wants your heart. You see, the heart first, then behavior. It's like actions that come from the heart. Second of all, he says, is that make sure that what you're doing, you're doing it for God. Now, that may seem kind of simple, okay, well, but not everything that we do, come on, let's be real, not everything that we do, even in church, we do it for God. We do it so that people can look at us in a certain way. Oh, they might think, well, you, that person is really spiritual because they're doing this or doing that. And so our acts of righteousness, our acts of worship, there again, the second one is that make sure that you're doing it for God, okay? Hey, you know, and, and that it's just not for a show. And then the third thing, don't do good things so that people will see you doing good and think that you're a great person, okay? You know, that, you know, and, uh, and Jesus said in... Matthew 5, 16, and that was that verse that we had up earlier. He says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your what? Your good works. You know, it sounds like Jesus can't make up his mind, okay? You know, one moment, well, you know, we are not to do this, and then the next moment we are. But really what he is saying is that 
with the first thing in Matthew 5 6 he says that the the good works that we do on the outside they bring what praise to God whereas if we're only doing it so that we can look good or people think we're a great person or we're a great pastor or we're a great teacher or whatever if we're only doing it for that reason then we're doing it what for our praise you know we're doing it so that we get the praise okay and so, you know, just these three things, just, you know, this is what Je Jesus is going right after the heart, you know, and, and, uh, and hopefully he's going after your heart. You know, he wants us to examine our hearts, you know, is, you know, uh, the things that we do, our ministries, our lives, you know, do they really come from within or have we just learned to do all the right moves, say the right words, Okay. And, and so the Pharisees and the scribes with Jesus, you know, he's, you know, he doesn't talk about them in a very favorable way. You know, they had it all on the outside, but certainly on the inside, there was a whole lot of things lacking. So in summary, uh, if your motive for going to church or doing a good deed or helping the poor or praying to God, Okay, or performing some ministry, if you're doing these things just to impress people around you, then it really doesn't mean anything to God. Okay, it really doesn't mean anything to God. And I know that may sound kind of kind of harsh, and, 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 and I know that none of us are perfect, and we're kind of working through these things. But, um, but like I said, Jesus, you know, you know Jesus is, is going after, he's, he wants your heart. And so the truth is, is that, you know, that if he, if he's got your heart, then most likely then, then he's going to get everything else. Okay. He doesn't want everything else and then not your heart. And sometimes we're willing to kind of to give God everything else, but we're not willing really, really to give him our, our hearts. And so, you know, this is what he's talking about. And so in these next, uh, tw uh, 17 verses he talks about three examples one is about giving one is about prayer and one is about fasting and these are all things which deal with what worship okay and all of them he speaks about that the that they must come from what they must come from the heart okay and, and, and so uh, so we're going to be talking about tonight we're going to just, just going to be talking about the one about giving okay and uh, and so let's read together verses two through four, and then we'll kind of, you know, we'll kind of go down through each one of these verses, and then I just want to draw out some, some, some things that maybe the Lord will speak to us about. And, and so in verse two, it says, so when you see the needy, now I'm reading from the NIV. So when you see the needy, do not announce it with trumpets. So when you give to the needy, I'm sorry. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by men. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what the right hand is doing. Okay? So that your giving may be in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And so this is a very interesting ver you know, verses here. And, uh, you know, so if you're taking notes again, I just really have two points. The first point is this here. So when you see, so when you give to the needy, Jesus presupposes that as followers of Jesus Christ, we would be a people who will give. That's, you know, he presupposes that, that if, if we are followers of Christ, then we're going to be what? We're going to be givers. Okay. We're, you know, we're going to, now we may not be givers at the beginning, okay, but we're going to be giving. And then as Christians, okay, as followers of Christ, it's just not about our tithes and our offerings, offerings which, which we should, and it's biblical, but when possible, actually, the context really talks more about, you know, when it's possible that we give to those in need, okay? As Christians, we should demonstrate the action of, of being a giver rather than a taker. Jesus, in John 13, verse 34, he says this here. 
A new commandment I give to you that you love one another. As I have loved you that you also love one another. The principle that governs our, our giving, Jesus says that when you give, and this is the principle that he's kind of given to us. When you give, don't make it a big deal. You know, have you ever, you know, like, you know, given something and, and you just, you just want to tell everybody about it, you know? And I know that sometimes it's exciting to be able to give and whatever, you know, but sometimes the reason why we really want to tell everybody is because we want recognition. You know, we want, you know, uh, and, and there again, I'm not saying all that is bad, but, but we need to grow in this, that. You know, don't attract attention to yourself. You know, don't advertise that Jesus says that you're giving. In 1 John 3, 17, it says, But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? You know, and so, you know, we are to be uh, people who give. Okay, we, we should be giving people. It should become a part of our nature, okay? And there again, it doesn't happen all of a sudden, but it, it should happen, okay? And, th and uh, um, this attitude of giving, it shouldn't be just towards people of faith. I believe it also should go beyond the people of faith, in which we'll see later on. And so often we think of, of giving, we generally think about money, Okay? And it's great to be able to give money, but certainly money, you know, is not the only way in which, or the only thing in which we give, okay? Uh, your money is important, but it's only one of the many things that we should be generously giving, especially to the poor and needy. How about our time? Uh, this afternoon, a couple of folks from our church went to a lady's house and gave up some of their time and their... Uh, not so much talent, but time, and you know, to help help a lady who 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 was in need. Okay, um, you know, you know, time. You know, oftentimes, uh, you know, we would rather maybe give money than give our time. I don't know about you. Uh, time is precious. Uh, maybe maybe uh, in some kind of God way in which He moves that. Even just during this time, you know, many of us have more time on our hands than what we know to do with. And so, and I'm not saying that we can go out and maybe do a lot of these things here, but, um, but we need to be given, given uh, a given of our talents. You know, uh, you know, many of us, you know, God is, you know, God has blessed the body, the body of Christ with so many people who, who you know, who have special abilities and, and talents, which you know, which, which need to be given, okay? And then it's like, you know, it's like sometimes you have, you know, those, those who want to serve and serve in their talents, but they want to be recognized. And then you have those who, who have talents, but then they don't want to be, you know, they don't want to serve. And of course, they're going to never be recognized, okay? And so there, there's a balance in here. And, 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 you know, and just talking with people, you know, being there. And, and so, you know, Jesus here is, is I believe he's really showing, showing us something more than just, you know, opening up our wallets and giving $10 or something like that. That, um, and so, so anyway, so let's kind of, you know, stick with me here. The righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes, you know, caused them to look down and actually judge the poor and the needy. You know, in some way, maybe they were even thinking that, hey, they deserve what they got. You know, you, you know, I mean, the world is full of needy people, poor people, and and uh, you know, and so you know, maybe they got what they you know, deserved. I remember, you remember in Luke 18, and we're not going to turn there, but it, it was the story of the Pharisee and the tax collector. And the Pharisee, you know, he was the one who bragged about all that he put in the treasury and all that he would give and all this kind of stuff. And then he looked down upon the tax collector and he says, oh, how thankful I am not like this sinner, this, this tax collector. And then the, the uh, tax collector, you know, was on his face, you know, 
uh, it was face to the ground, needy and broken. And what does he do? He, he, he cries out to God, oh God, have mercy on me. You know, something which I never thought about reading this is that what an opportunity that the Pharisee had that day. You know, here was a man who was broken. He was a man who was, you know, he was, you know, you know, he knew he was a sinner. He said, you know, God have mercy on me, a sinner. I mean, he knew his sin was large and his need was big. And, 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 and of course, now the Pharisee, you know, who couldn't get beyond his own righteousness or, you know, he couldn't get past himself. Uh, you know, his giving was more about getting recognized for it. I guess he didn't see that there was really no benefit here for him. But what an opportunity that this Pharisee had. You know, he could have he ministered to this guy, you know, to give to someone, you know. I mean, he was a teacher of the law. You know, he could have given him something. But what he gave him sometimes was you know, was, was nothing. You know, he, you know, he didn't give him anything. He just gave him judgment, actually, okay? You know, everywhere Jesus, if you look at, you know, read the Gospels, everywhere Jesus went, there was needy people. I mean, everywhere. I mean, story after story, account after account. You know, it's like, you know, he uh, seldom was he, uh, you know, kind of hung out with, with people who had it all together. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with having it all together. Okay, but but Jesus went where you know you know Jesus gave to 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 the needy, and so when Jesus is talking about this kingdom handbook that He's given to us, okay, that our righteousness, you know, it it better be different than the righteousness, the self righteousness, the the arrogance, the the, the pride and whatever of the of the righteousness of the uh, religious leaders of that day. Ours, ours better go beyond that, okay? Because really they were called to what? To minister to the needy, okay? Just like we are. Everywhere Jesus went, you know, he met the needs. You know, many times, you know, these needs, you know, uh, 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 the needs uh, uh, of those that crossed his path, okay? You know, he ministered to. Now, what about those that maybe cross our paths, You know those that those that uh, those that attend our church on a Sunday. I think about in James where it talks about uh, you know not looking down upon the the rich and then I mean looking up at the rich and and saying hey let's you know let's push them right up to the front row and mm -hmm. you know let's have a big celebration because we got somebody rich in our church you know whatever and then it's the poor guy. You know, comes in and, you know, it's obvious that he doesn't have a lot of money, his clothes and, and whatever. And then, you know, we, we ignore him. Okay? You know, ha, has our righteousness become like that? Okay? You know, Je you know Jesus, you know, uh, Jesus had such a heart for people of need. And I believe that if we are followers of Christ... How could we not have a heart for those in need? You know, how how could we be, be not ones who will give? Okay, and this is what he's talking about in these three verses. It's about giving of ourselves. Okay, giving of our money. Sometimes, yeah, it's going to be money, but oftentimes it's going to be something else. It's going to be giving our time. Even you know, maybe even giving a conversation. You know, taking a few moments to have a conversation, it, it's amazing what opportunity, you know, what, what can happen when we, you know, when we avail ourselves in this way. You know, Jesus didn't meet every need and, and neither can we, okay? You know, our, our giving, whether or not it's money, whether or not it's our time, whether or not it's our resources, whether or not, whatever it might be, uh, you, know, you know, we must be led by the Spirit, Okay, and this is something that we can learn. You know, I want, I don't want my wife, you know, one evening driving home from work and she sees a guy and, and his car is broke down and, and, you know, or at least it appears to be broken down. And then for her to pull over and, and, and to minister to this guy. You know, I, I really don't want her to do that. I believe that we need to have wisdom, okay? 
and and but but she can pray for him and that if that if he really got car problems that maybe someone else will come along and and be able to meet that need you know you know we you know we need to be gentle as doves what right and wise as serpents okay you know we need to be led by by the, not by the impulses of our feelings so i'm not saying to you even suggesting at all that every need that comes your way you got to respond to it because Jesus didn't. But there are times, you know, we don't, you know, we can't be driven by the impulses of our feelings, but we can and we must be driven by the impulses of the Spirit of God. And when the Spirit of God speaks upon your heart, and how many times have He spoken to me, and I'm guilty of this as much as anyone else, is that since the impulse of the Holy Spirit to, you know, to, to, you know, to kind of stop what I'm doing, okay, which is, <laughs> in my mind, so important, okay, you know, because something, a need has come up, okay, and rather, rather seeing it as an opportunity, I saw it as a nuisance or an annoyance or a distraction, an interruption, and, um, boy, aren't you so so glad that Jesus maybe didn't view our need <laughs> as a distraction or an annoyance. And, and so, you know, we need to be wise. Don't, you know, don't misunderstand. We need to be wise in this world, okay? Because, uh, but we also need to give. You know, when, when the opportunity comes and you feel that it is the Lord, you know, whether or not it's what you know, what, whether or not it's writing out a check for, for whatever, or if you know it's 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 you know talking to that person that you don't know, or or maybe meeting that need of a neighbor, whatever it might be that the Lord brings here. I think I believe the Lord is showing us that that in our giving, okay, that we need to seek Him, and then you know as we give our lives you know it's more than just about our money but we're giving our lives okay and so i'm going to kind of draw this to an end here tonight because uh, ne next week we got really a large subject we're probably not going to be able to deal with it at all in 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 one evening when it talks about prayer okay but um in proverbs 19 verse 17 this is uh this is a real cool verse okay and 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 so Listen to what it says. It says, He who is kind to the poor lends to the Lord. <laughs> you ever thought you ever thought that way? You know. So, you know, whoever is 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 kind to the poor and whatever, you know, whatever that need is, you know, whether or not it's you know, whether or not it's uh money, you know, whether or not it's just being there, you know, talk, talking with them for a few, you know, you know for a little bit, uh, you know, giving them a ride, you know, helping them out in whatever way. Uh, it says that if you do this, if you, you do that, you lend to the Lord. Okay, you lend to the Lord. And then it goes on to say, for he will receive, he will, be, he will reward him for what he has done. Okay, remember in verse four in our text, it says in that very last phrase in verse 4, Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Okay? You know, those who give from the pure motive uh, of worship, because giving is a part of our worship, it will be rewarded by God. Okay? Okay? And the poor is compared to to like loaning money to God, okay? And 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 um, you know it says in Second Corinthians nine sixteen, you know, and and we have that that verse up here. He says, "But this I say to you that he who spares, who who sows sparingly, will also reap sparingly. But he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully." Okay, you know, and so it's like. You know, God will meet generosity with what? Generosity, okay? And, and so as we are, are giving, uh, as we are giving ourselves uh, to be used of God. See, I believe that giving is such, is such a way which we can, 
God can work through us and he can minister to us and just in the attitude of our giving. You know, that giving changes our lives. You know, your, you, your life will be changed when you, because of generosity, your life will be changed. Okay, I'm not, not talking about your bank book or anything like that. But I'm talking about your life will be changed as you are willing to, you know, willing to invest it, willing to allow your life to be poured out, you know, willing to give of your life. To, to others, you know, God, you know, I mean, God's going to, you know, God's going to make sure that he gets it back to you. It's like that, that verse in Matthew 6, 30, you know, 33, seek ye first, what, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all the other things will be what? It will be added to you. So, you know, with the right heart of worship and heart and there's an opportunity, you know, and I believe that's really I want you just to see that as we give to the needy, there's such an opportunity to reach people, okay? And in just a moment, I'm going to have Greg, Greg come up, and he's going to pray, pray for us. And he's, you know, I'm just believing that, that there are times in our everyday life where we have an opportunity to give. And it may not be every day, but I'm sure there are times Okay, that there is an opportunity to to give, and there again, it's not just on church on Sunday when we write out our check and put it in the office. I'm talking about giving yourself to someone else to to be a blessing to someone else, and 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 isn't it amazing that so early in this sermon, this is what Jesus talks about. Jesus talks about us giving ourselves to one another, and what you know. Giving ourselves to each other. So with the right motive of worship and heart and opportunity, our giving, our giving will not only you know, change your life, but how about maybe change someone else? Your life can change someone else as you're willing to be poured out, as you're willing to be an offering to, to someone else. And, and so, so as we're talking about worship, we're talking about giving, yes. Yeah, we're talking about, get, yeah, we need to give our money to church and so forth. Yes, we need to do that. But more than that, we need to give ourselves as the Lord lays, lays out, as he gives us opportunities to minister to people, to, to minister to the needy. And we live in a community where there is so much need. Okay? And there again, please, none of us can meet all the needs. We're not God did not mean for you to meet every single need that comes in your path. But there will be times and there will be opportunities, you know, special moments where, where it's kind of like God calls your number. It's your number. And whether or not it's giving a few dollars, whether or not it's giving a few moments of your time, you know it could change that person's life forever. Amen. You know what I'm talking? It could change their life forever. So I want to challenge you to be a giver. Not just giving of your money, but giving of yourself. And so I pray this, this uh, blesses you tonight. And so look forward to seeing you Sunday. Greg is going to come and he's going to close us in prayer. Good evening, everyone. I just want to thank Pastor for it. An awesome message here. Uh, again, this Sunday, don't forget to tune in. And also, uh, those that are watching live on Facebook, and uh, if you have any needs, please put them out there uh, so that we can see them and we can be praying for you. Uh, also, uh, whenever things are done here tonight and we're all wrapped up, uh, share this. You know, just just hit that share button on your on your Facebook page and. Let it go out to, uh, a lot, you know, like myself, many of the people that I uh, am friends with on Facebook are not saved. And maybe they may need to hear something like this. And as far as giving is concerned, remember, sometime this week, during the week, pick up the telephone. Give somebody a call. Just let, ask them how they're doing and what they're doing. and uh, Show that you care and so, show that you're concerned about that. Mm -hmm. So as we end tonight in prayer, I just want to thank Pastor again and thank you out there for tuning in and uh, 
I hope to see you all here on Sunday. So let's pray. Father God, as we come before you tonight, Lord, Lord, I just ask that those that are viewing here tonight, Lord, and those that may be viewing at a later time, Lord, that you would move upon their heart to give. Not just give financially during this time, but give of themselves. Give of their heart. Even just to pick up the telephone and call somebody that uh, you may not have talked to for a while or an elderly person that may be in need of something and we don't even know it, but if you happen to call them, then uh, you know you can find a way to, to, to help them. So Lord, uh, we just place this before your feet, Lord. Lord, we, I just ask now that you bless each and every individual out there, Father God. Lord, just quiet and still them during this time. Lord, let them know that you're beside them, that you'll never leave them, that you'll never forsake them, that you're, you are their companion right now in many different time, instances. So as we go forth from here tonight, Lord, let us seek your glory. Let us pray and let us, you know, read and let us uh, come into a fuller knowledge of you. So when this is all said and done, that we could go out there, go out there and help a neighbor or help someone that is in need. So, Lord, I just ask you now to bless, bless those that are listening, bless those that are going to be listening, Father God. Be with them, guide them, and direct them. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.